like the Humber Bridge, but it's actually the Severn Bridge, built in 1966. And this is our Humber Mark II. I've been uh, promising you a look round this car. This is just an introduction to the car rather than um, a, a film about telling you what I'm planning to do to it. So we bought the car two years ago from a man in Southampton. Uh, it was basically a stock car as it left the factory. Um, but uh, we use it as an everyday drive, so we've had to make some improvements to it. The first one being, as soon as we got it, was an end-to-end -end stainless steel exhaust, a fancy pants digital radio, Ooh, fruit shorters. It's got the original pattern cross ply tyres on it and I'm thinking of changing them for radials because the uh, handling in this car is, to say the least, entertaining. But the biggest number of changes we made have been under the bonnet. So when we got the car it had the stock uh, rubber case battery which just was nice, it was as original but wo woefully uh, underpowered. Um, I've changed the points for electronic ignition and interestingly enough when I sent the distributor off to be um, repaired they came back and said this was um, a distributor out of a Mark III Scepter so that's an improvement as far as I'm concerned, that's a good thing. Um, very soon after we got the car I changed the Solex carburetor that was on it for a Weber carburetor. The Solex carburetor had been redone, it had new gaskets and um, new jets and things put in but it was just leaking all over the place and I think it was just worn out so time to change that. Unfortunately because I changed that I had to buy a new air filter to put on it. I'm not a boy racer but this is just the only air filter I could find that would fit on it. The one that came on the car wouldn't. Because this car's an automatic, fitting a Weber on it wasn't as easy as I'd have hoped because the so-called kick-down cable here, which isn't really a kick-down cable, it's a pressure control cable, uh, the linkage was all completely different so I've had to invent uh, a, a set of linkages. I don't know if you can see them there. Um, I will show you how that was done or if you want to know how that's done get in touch with me and I'll tell you how I did it. But it's made out of all sorts of bits and pieces. The cable when we bought the car was quite badly frayed, the original cable. Um, it wasn't returning all the way and it wasn't coming out all the way and unfortunately I think it's done a little bit of damage to the uh, automatic transmission but I have one in at the moment being rebuilt so that's getting ready to go in. The other big modification I did was took off the mechanical cooling fan because we drive this car a lot and we use it every day driving it on the motorway it was a bit like sitting in a Lancaster bomber the droning on it I fitted a pair of twin cooling fans out of a Sunbeam Alpine um, and put on a rather natty little uh, electric switch that screws into the hose none of these nasty capillary things that go under there and, and leak left, right and centre uh, the only other jobs I've done on it since I've got it I've put four new track rod ends in because it's drag link steering on a steering box so there's one on the end of each arm um, I can't think of what else I've really done to it at the moment it had to have a new water pump which was a shame just after I got it because it was leaking everywhere and last but not least a nice red steering wheel cover put on by the lady wife right so let's see how it goes it starts lovely oil pressure that car go by into drive. And we're away. Look at that. And it sounds nice too. We're gonna to get a third. There it is. 40 almost 50 miles an hour. And it's as smooth as smooth lot like not the steering wheel like that. Not a problem. It really does drive beautifully. Whether putting radials on it uh, is going to change that, I don't know. And so as you probably noticed, the paintwork on the outside is a little tired. It's had a respray at some point, but some of the original paint was left on it, and it's starting to fade. So uh, the plan is to get it resprayed. Uh, the big job for the winter, though, is to get the underside cleared off and redone. 
Um, but as I say, we use this car every day, so the amount of time it's off the road has really got to be kept to a minimum. That's our introduction to the Mark II Scepter. There will be some other little films coming out with some other things I want to do. Um, there'll be one coming up very soon about triple core radiators, one coming in about all Warner gearbox woes, and uh, one about high torque starter motors. So um, if there's anything you want to know, get in touch, and I will speak to you soon.